Okay, so let's resolve our forces vertically and horizontally. So we can see our tension force, which is going to have a vertical component and a horizontal component. The angle is going to be 45 degrees. Similarly, I've got the rope, okay, which is going to have a horizontal component and a vertical component, but acting down. And I've got my, my force in the pole. All right, so let's just resolve everything vertical. So if I use a slightly darker color, so my void, vertical force, um, I've got opposite here, T sine 45, um, plus the force, okay, from the pole, equals the only forces acting downwards, which is the 120 Newton's force times cos 30. So that's that adjacent component to the angle, all right? Horizontal forces, T sine 45, uh, sorry, T cos 45, the adjacent side. The only forces acting in the opposite direction of the guy rope force, 120 sine theta. Uh, so again, there's my different forces. So once we get to that stage, I'm going to end up with two equations. So I can see straight away uh, from the horizontal components here, cos of 45, 1 on root 2. So T on root 2 equals sine of 30, which is a half, 60. So the tension force is 60 root 2 newtons. Um, put that into the first equation. So we get 60 root 2 times 1 on root 2, which is the sine 45 plus F equals 120 times cos of 30, which is root 3 on 2. So that becomes 60 root 3. Um, 1 on root 2 times root 2 cancels. So we get a minus 60. So there's my force, horizontal force. Okay, let's keep working through. Okay, this diagram shows two particles of masses three and five connected by a light string passed over a smooth pulley. <clears throat> Tension in the string is T newtons, A meters per squared, per second squared magnitude of acceleration of each particle. Okay, so let's resolve a direction that's positive and it doesn't take rocket science to think that the 5g force acting down is the particle that will um so we'll make that the positive direction so my five kilogram weight has a 5g force tension acting up the string my three kilogram weight has a 3g force tension acting up the string because it's a smooth pulley and we only deal with smooth pulleys the tensions are the same all right so let's resolve system one so system one i've got well, if positive is down, I've got 3G. So the positive is down on the right. So that's direction of motion there is positive. So I've got tension acting up minus 3G acting down equals MA, which is 3A. So don't forget the sum of the forces equals MA. Um, for the second particle acting down, I've got 5G acting down minus the tension acting up equals 5a sum of the forces equals ma so that's always your starting point sum of the forces equals ma and if our particle is stationary well the sum of the forces equals zero so that's fine um, so what have we done there we've added these two good lines together it looks like i reckon that's all oh there it is over there i couldn't quite see it one plus two so the t's cancel i get 5g minus 3g which is uh, 2g 3a plus 5a is 8a it gives my acceleration as g on four meters per second squared um, yeah All right, what have we got here? Same sort of thing. I've got two blocks, five kilogram and 10 kilogram attached by a light inextensible string. The blocks are on a smooth surface, so there's no horizontal friction by a horizontal force of 20 Newtons. So there's my 20 Newtons. Particle two has got a 10 G force acting down. I guess we've got a, uh, a normal force acting up. The tension in the string acting to the left, then the 5G block 
system two, it's got a 5G force acting down and also a tension in the string. So let's have a look at the system one. The only forces in play here are, um, we've got the horizontal forces. There's no vertical motion, so I don't have to worry about that. So the sum of the forces equals MA. So positive to the right. So I've got tension, no other forces, is equal to MA. So the tension is equal to 5A. System two, I've got 20 newtons acting to the right, minus tension acting to the left, equals 10A, because that's the particle, of, that's the sum of the particles here. Um, yeah, so again, we can um, add, substitute 5A into the tension. So we get 20 minus 5A is 15A. And then A is equal to 20 on 15, which is 4 thirds metres per second squared. Okay. Uh, the tension in the string, uh, well, tension is equal to MA, which is five times that, which is 20 on three newtons. Okay. Similarly, sum of the forces equals MA. So we've got a total of 15 kilos because the, there's no other frictions involved between the rope here. We've got a 15 kilo weight, uh, 20 newtons acting to the right. Acceleration is 20 on 15. Right. Okay, a 50 kilo student stands in a lift which accelerates downwards. So there's my, I dare say my 50 kilo student going downwards at a rate of two meters per second squared. Find the reaction of the lift floor on the student. So we've got the resultant force. That's what I'm looking for. So sum of the forces equals MA. So I've got positive is downwards. So I've got 50G minus R down minus up equals MA. So there's my sum of the forces equals MA. 50G minus R equals MA. Um, work through that. We get the resultant force is 390 newtons. A few minutes later, the lift accelerates upwards at a rate of two meters per second squared. So same sort of scenario, except this time I'm going to make positive as up, which means my resultant minus my 50G equals MA. And so we'll see that we have an increase. Since gravity is acting against us when we're traveling up, we have greater forces in play, 590 newtons. All right, a body of mass two kilograms is initially at rest and is acted on by a resultant force of V minus four newtons here. V is the velocity in meters per second, the body moves in a straight line. All right, show the acceleration. Some of the forces equals MA. So, M times A, we've got the acceleration. So, sorry. Um, other forces equals MA, so M is 2, so 2A equals V minus 4, so the acceleration equals V minus 4 on 2. Other forms of acceleration, um, dV dt, V dV dx, all those sorts of things, but since we're looking for dV dt, which is acceleration, therefore dV dt is V minus 4 on 2. Solve that DE, so we've done a bit of that. So if we flip and then integrate with respect to t, we get 2 over v minus t dv. So 2 natural log of v minus 4 plus c is equal to t. Put my initial condition in, minus 2 natural log of minus 8. Um, sorry, that's a 4 in there. So we'll incorporate those logs together, um, bring the half across, take it to the e to the power of a half t is v minus 4 over negative 4. So very quickly we get an expression for V. Okay, so that ties in our difference equations knowledge with our um, forces knowledge. Question five, a flower pot hanging. Okay, so we've got our flower pot hanging and we've got the ropes and the tensions uh, connected to a set of the first row, angle 30 degrees, tension T, the second makes an angle of 60 nothing about distances all right it's in equilibrium so all the forces balance out to be zero so 
horizontal forces have to equal. All right. So there's my T. So in here, we've got T adjacent, T cos 60. Okay. Oh, sorry, T1 cos 60. There's T2 there. Is going to be a good T2 adjacent cos 30. Um, we could also use Lamy's theorem in here, which is what we've done over here. And then we can do the same thing for vertical. So we've got our um, T1, sorry, T2 sine 30. And on this side, I've got T1 sine 60, but we've also got an MG acting down. So to finish off part A, I've got T1 cos 60, a half T1 is equal to T2 cos 30, root 3 on 2T2, solve for T2, I get T2 is equal to T1 on root 3, or without resolving, set up my Lamy's theorem, which is how I've solved it here. Okay, we can work out the angles in between. How do I know it's a 90 degree angle? Well, obviously I've got my 60 degrees and 30 degrees, which will give me a 90 degree in there. All right. The first rope is strong, but the second rope will break if the tension in it exceeds 98 newtons. Find the maximum value of M for which the flower pot will remain in equilibrium. All right, so the second part here says that the second rope will break if the tension in it exceeds 98 newtons. So T2 has to be equal to 98 or less than 98. And that implies then, given T2 is equal to T1 on root 3, uh, T1 has to be less than 98 root 3 newtons. So resolving um, vertically, I get my T1 sine 60 on the left-hand side plus T2 sine 30 on the right-hand side has to be less than mg in reality, um, acting vertically down. So if we substitute those values in, 98 root 3, root 3 on 2, 98 times a half, mg, uh, we can rearrange that to solve for m. So a half of 98 is 49. Uh, 98 root 3, well root 3 times root 3 is 3, so we get 98 times 3 on 2. Um, so it tidies up a little bit to give me a nice little 20 for 20 kilograms, okay? So that means the mass would need to be less than 20 kilograms, otherwise um, our rope will break.